Greetings. On behalf of the U.S. Green Building Council, Missouri Gateway Chapter, thank you for signing up to participate as a mentor in the Green Schools Quest. My name is Hope Gribble. I'm the Education and Green Schools Manager for the chapter, and I manage the Green Schools Quest program with the assistance of our volunteer-based Green Schools Committee. If you have any questions throughout the school year, I'm your go-to person. My contact information is listed here and also included in any email communications that you've received from me. We're going to kick off the training with a brief overview of the U.S. Green Building Council, Missouri Gateway Chapter, our local green schools initiatives, and some national resources to provide context on some of the work that we've been doing in the green schools arena. We'll then dig into the Green Schools Quest, including mentor responsibilities, project milestones, resources, and important updates to the program. We'll wrap things up with some examples of winning project submissions from previous years. USGBC Missouri Gateway is a 501c3 nonprofit charitable organization, and our work is aligned with the mission and goals of the National U.S. Green Building Council. We have over 400 chapter members who represent a variety of backgrounds. While the majority of our membership consists of building industry professionals, such as architects and engineers, our membership also includes a number of educators and members of the general public who support our mission. Because we all spend the majority of our lives in buildings, we can all relate to, work with, and learn from buildings. And each of us plays a key role in influencing the impact that our buildings have on our health and the environment. So as time goes on, we see our membership base broadening more and more. Our organization's vision is to create and restore buildings and communities that will regenerate and sustain the health and vitality of all life within a generation. This includes creating healthy, sustainable schools for everyone within this generation, an exciting goal that we're thrilled to work towards with your help. There are a number of reasons why we feel it is important to focus on greening our schools. One is the sheer number of people in the U.S. who are affected by the condition of our school buildings. 25% of our nation's population goes to school every day. As students, faculty, or staff at a K-12 school or college or university. We want to improve these environments so that they are healthier to inhabit and less taxing on the environment and pocketbook. Additionally, we want to teach the next generation about living sustainably. We want for them to become a generation of sustainability natives, individuals with sustainability practices embedded in their thoughts and actions. We understand that this will have a ripple effect as students influence their families, friends, and communities. While this training is focused on one initiative, our Green Schools Quest, I felt it would be helpful to provide some more information about some of the other work that we're doing in the Green Schools area. Our chapter has a Green Schools Committee that meets on the fourth Wednesday of each month. The committee provides resources to help schools go green, plans educational events and advocates for green schools and our region's political discourse. Committee members assist with planning and implementing the Green Schools Quest as well as our annual Green Schools event. The committee is open to any of our chapter members as well as members of the K-12 community. It's not a requirement for mentors to serve on this committee, but mentors are absolutely welcome if, to participate if it's of interest. The annual event that we hold each spring is an opportunity for us to celebrate both the winners and participants of the Green Schools Quest. We will announce the winners at the event and several winning teams will take the stage to talk about their projects. So take a look at the timeline for this year and mark your calendars. Each June, we partner with a number of organizations on the three-day Sustainability Institute for Educators. This is a fabulous opportunity for teachers and administration to learn about educating through the lens of sustainability. Please encourage the school representatives that you are working with through the quest to attend. Each year has a different theme, so new as well as previous participants are encouraged to attend, and we'll share information about 
the upcoming year's uh, institute with you and your school of context as soon as more information becomes available. I do want to mention that this institute um, has a number of scholarships available and preference is given to schools participating in the Green Schools Quest. All of this work is supported by our annual Green School sponsors. Our 2018-19 Green Schools champions are Ameren, Missouri and St. Louis County Department of Public Health. And our Green School supporters are Innovative Technology Education Fund and TRAIN. Additionally, ongoing support of the Green Schools Quest is provided by the St. Louis Jefferson Solid Waste Management District and the Missouri Department of Natural Resources. We sincerely appreciate the support of our sponsors and the opportunity for us to be able to pass along cash awards and trophies to each of the winning schools in the Green Schools Quest. On the national level, USGBC has established the Center for Green Schools. The Center for Green Schools works with local USGBC communities throughout the U.S. to provide resources and support for green schools initiatives. They also are becoming a larger player in the national realm of green schools. Uh, they offer a really valuable website that I highly recommend you check out. Uh, the web address is centerforgreenschools.org. They have a series of 20-minute videos that address different components of greening a school and a number of user-friendly resources, such as the whole school sustainability framework and others pictured here. They also host Learning Lab, which is an online portal for K-12 sustainability curriculum. This is a subscription-based service, which costs $40 per year and houses hundreds of high-quality lesson plans. The Center for Green Schools also hosts Green Apple Day of Service, which is an annual initiative that encourages parents, teachers, students, and companies to engage in local service projects at area schools. USGBC Missouri Gateway will be registering each participating school's Green Schools Quest project as a Green Apple Day of Service activity. The mygreenapple.org website is also a really great web, uh, website for project ideas. Additionally, USGBC co-hosts the National Green Schools Conference and Expo, which travels to a different state each year. In 2019, the expo will take place on April 8th and 9th in, uh, in Minnesota. And the center works hand-in-hand -hand with the U.S. Department of Education to provide support surrounding the Green Ribbon Schools Recognition Program, including the collaboration on the Green Strides website, which is pictured here. This is another really helpful website with resources and a webinar series. I mentioned Green Ribbon Schools uh, in the last slide, and I'd like to tell you a little bit more about it. The Green Urban Schools Recognition Program launched during the 2011-12 school year and was modeled after the more commonly known Blue Ribbon Schools Award Program that recognizes academic achievement. The Green Ribbon Schools Award recognizes schools that embody exemplary practices and achievements in three areas, reducing environmental impacts and costs, improved health and wellness of students and staff, and effective environmental and sustainability education. It's an extremely comprehensive and high-level award that is open to all schools, public and private, on an annual basis within participating states. We feel it's really important to raise awareness about this program, um, to encourage schools to employ exemplary practices in these three areas, and to encourage schools to apply for the recognition. A little later, we're going to discuss a new component to the Green Schools Quest that aims to support schools in working towards this recognition. So now that you have some background information, let's dig into the Green Schools Quest. Through this program, we hope to empower students and communities to be good stewards of their own environments while facilitating a connection between the green building and sustainability professional community and younger generations. 
We are so delighted that you have volunteered to participate in this program as a green mentor. We sincerely thank you for working with us to make every school a green school. Schools from anywhere within the chapter's territory, which is pictured in blue, are encouraged to participate, though the majority of participants are located within the St. Louis metro area. When we talk about green schools, we're thinking about three critical components that are illustrated on this slide. While each of the Green Schools Quest projects will touch upon the building pillar, uh, we encourage project teams to try as much as possible to in incorporate the other two components, community, including both the internal culture of the school as well as the broader community, and curriculum. Every school team and project is different. Some are led by a teacher, in which case it may be easier to integrate that curriculum component, whereas others are being led and sponsored by a parent, in which case it might not be quite as easy to get it into the curriculum, but incorporate components from these three critical areas is something that is important for you to keep in mind when you're looking um, towards your project and, uh, and with any team. I do also want to um, expand upon that buildings uh, section there, component. When we are talking about buildings, we're really talking about the built environment as a whole. So that is essentially man-made man -made society, uh, man-made structures. Um, we're not only talking about the building um, envelope and inside the building, we're also talking about the site. We're talking about um, the roadways and sidewalks and connectors for transportation. Um, we're talking about the built community, the built environment as a whole. So please do keep that open-minded um, approach in mind. We've established a number of goals for the Green Schools Quest, which are illustrated here. Because each project is unique, each project will be establishing and achieving their own goals, uh, which might include one, two, three, four, or five of these. Um, regardless, we do believe that collectively we'll be making an impact in all of these areas. Now let's dive into the mentor responsibilities. First, we ask that our mentors provide sustainability expertise and guidance at their assigned schools. Precise areas of what might be considered technical expertise are of course unique to each mentor. In some cases, the school may choose a project that's right in line with your area of technical expertise. In other cases, they may choose a project outside of your technical wheelhouse, in which case, your contributions might be more along the lines of project management, uh, making sure that the team is aware of the timeline and structure of the Green Schools Quest. When a project does not align exactly with your area of expertise, this is also a great opportunity for you to investigate what other resources and organizations exist in the community that might be of help in the endeavor, and then connect the school with these resources. Secondly, Commit a minimum of four to six hours per month of personal time mentoring the assigned school, beginning October and ending mid-March. We've surveyed our past mentors and asked them how much time they've spent mentoring their school. The average was right around five hours per month. Of course, there were some mentors who spent quite a bit more time and others who spent less, though we feel a four to six hour a month um, estimate is a safe estimate for your time investment. We also ask that you meet with your school at least two times per month. This is again a ballpark figure, um, considering the program takes place over a six month period of time. Touching base and meeting in person with the school twice per month seems to be a reasonable amount of time to keep the project moving along. Again, this will be adjusted based upon your individual team, project, and schedule. Help students and their team sponsor green their schools at little to no cost. There will be a minimum of one adult representative from each school that will assist as the school team sponsor. This is typically a faculty member, but it may be an administrator or a parent. Please notice uh, the second component of this bullet point, that you're helping the school to uh, green their school for little or no cost. For this 
initiative, we have identified low cost as $250 or less contributed by the school. Um, this is a ballpark figure, um, roughly $250. We are not requiring schools to um, maintain and submit a budget, but we wanted to just put some figure out there as a general estimate. Um, the school is not required to donate any money towards this project, and our organization will not be contributing any money towards the project. If the school decides that they would like to donate money or budget money, uh, we're simply establishing you know, this general ballpark as a $250 cap. This does not keep your team from pursuing additional donations, grant funding, or any other outside force of funding for the project. Our aim with this component is twofold. Number one, we want to level the playing field between all of the participating schools, which are quite diverse in nature. We also want to showcase that you can do a lot within a school for little or no cost. Green doesn't have to cost more. It often saves. Next, you'll be providing guidance on project selection, execution, establishment of metrics, and recording impact. The key word here being guidance. This again is individual for every team. It's very important to discuss this with the school sponsor. Identify who will own each of the different components of the project. Who will be the driving force? What will be the division of labor? Likely, the students, mentor, and sponsor will each play a role in, in, in every component, um, but to what degree and when recording impact, who will be documenting this all along the way? Who's taking the photos and capturing the videos? You want to be able to tell a story when you're putting your final documentation together, and in order to tell that story, it's very helpful to have you know, some photos from the very beginning stages throughout the process and also at the end. Early identification of who will own that is going to be very helpful to you. We've developed a short, roughly 20-minute um, presentation and activity that we offer as an optional resource for our mentors to deliver to their schools. It's available on our website and explores the concept of what a green building is and then shows five different areas of a school, the cafeteria, classroom, school office, and school grounds. Um, for instance, then students are asked to think about green practices that could take place in each of these specific areas of the school. Um, there are accompanying flashcards that outline um, our 101 ways to green your school that we'll talk about in a little bit. Essentially, this is just a, a more student-friendly version of the large spreadsheet um, with a flashcard um, for every different green action. Again, this is completely optional. Um, your, your team may have already decided on a project, um, or if they have not, this could be a helpful resource in exploring options and project ideas. Feel free to reach out to me with any questions about that, of course. We'll be asked to submit progress reports via a quick online survey twice through the Green Schools Quest. Um, I'll be checking in with you throughout the program via email, but I only require that you provide feedback to me twice uh, during the program. Our goal here is to make sure things are running smoothly, see if you have any questions, um, though I would of course encourage you to contact me anytime uh, if you have questions or to provide feedback. You'll want to assist with documentation and preparation of final submission materials. Um, because our age ranges vary so much within the participant structure, uh, from early childhood all the way through high school, this will vary from each team. Um, we would not expect, of course, an early childhood student to prepare the school's final documentation. Um, however, it would be reasonable for a middle or high school student to document the project as well as prepare that final submission material. Um, we encourage you to involve the students as much as possible in all components. Again, this is an item to discuss with your sponsor early on regarding who's going to own you know, what components of that documentation and final submission. Lastly, all of our members 
um, all of our mentors, we do request that you are members of the U.S. GBC Missouri Gateway Chapter. If you are not yet a member, I'll be in touch uh, with you shortly and we'll get you squared away. The current program schedule is posted on our website. Please take a look and populate your calendar with any important dates. Um, note the timing of the conclusion of the Green Schools Quest may overlap with some schools' spring breaks. Um, I believe it's probably early enough this year that it won't, but just something to keep in mind. Um, during your initial meetings with your sponsor, we encourage you to map out a calendar. Uh, have the school calendar there um, as you map out a timeline for your project and aim to have your final documentation done by the end of February to provide a little bit of a buffer. In April, the winners will be announced at the annual Green Schools event, and throughout late April and May, we'll present awards at the winning schools. Members of our Green Schools Committee and Chapter Leadership go to each winning school to present the award. Each school then has the opportunity to decide how they would like the award to be presented. Um, rather than ask them to come to us, we're happy to come to them. Um, in the past, we've visited a number of school assemblies and school board meetings, as well as after-school clubs to present the trophies and cash prizes. It's a really great opportunity for um, the school to celebrate as a whole. So uh, they, of course, would not be able to bring the entire student body to um, an outside event. But if they're having a school assembly where everybody's there, you know, we'll come to them and present that award there, and everyone can be a part of that celebration. Once school registration is closed, we begin identifying pairings for participating schools and mentors. Our school registration form asks schools to outline the project they're interested in pursuing. Um, they don't have to have a specific project in mind, um, and if, it, if they do, they'll outline it in full, but if they don't, we do ask for them to identify two areas of interest, such as energy and waste diversion, for instance. Um, the mentor application asks mentors to identify any preferences regarding age group, location, and project type, and we utilize all of this information to pair our schools and mentors. We've been very pleased with the way the pairings have come out over the years, and we hope that you are pleased as well. Here's a brief overview of the next six months. Um, you will also receive an electronic version of a milestone schedule, which expands upon the tasks for each month. Uh, for now, we'll briefly look at the higher level picture here. Um, in October, you'll want to be meeting with your school and delivering that educational piece or working with them on identifying a project in whatever um, format or pathway you take to do so. In November, you and your team will refine your project idea and begin establishing metrics. This is a mentor check-in point when I'll send you one of those electronic surveys. In December, your focus may be on securing resources, um, engaging in the project, and beginning the documentation. Now, hopefully, your school has actually begun digging into the project earlier than this, maybe even in October or November. Um, but we've, I've got this in here in December just as a marker that, you know, by December, you should really definitely... Um, be engaging in that project in order to keep within the program's time frame. In January, you'll continue with project documentation. This is another mentor check-in point. And in February, you'll continue with the project and prepare your final documentation. Um, in March, you'll be concluding and submitting all of your materials. I'd like to go into a bit more detail um, for the month of October because it's really a time period in which you will be setting yourself up for success. Um, this is when you ha you'll have your first meeting with the school, um, establish a timeline, and kickstart your project. Um, we recommend setting up that first visit with the teacher and the school sponsor um, immediately. Send your school sponsor a message as soon as you receive the email from me pairing you with the school um, and set up a time to meet. We recommend that this initial meeting 
solely be between you and the team sponsor, um, not involving the students quite yet. This will allow you and the sponsor to get on the same page regarding what projects you might engage in. Um, we have a lengthy list of ways to green your school, as I mentioned um, before, um, and this is a great time for, for you and your sponsor to perhaps narrow that list a little bit or think about you know some, some projects that might be um, needed or, or feasible specifically for the unique school. Um, and then you could you could perhaps bring you know a smaller list of ideas to the students um, rather than overwhelming them with 100 ideas you know all at once. Again, some schools um, may already have a specific project in mind, in which case you'll you'll just begin digging into those details and get caught up with the, the team sponsor, um, you know, gaining background information from them and gathering their ideas before moving forward and meeting with the students. This is a great time to identify the division of labor and outline you know, who will be owning each component of the project. This is also a good time to determine what form of digital media um, will be used to document the project. At the conclusion of the Green Schools Quest, each school will submit a digital presentation as well as a written report and this digital presentation can be in a variety of formats. It could be a PowerPoint or a Prezi, um, or it could be a video. Regardless of the format, it's nice to identify you know, what media you'd like to use at the beginning so you can begin documenting, utilizing you know, that format and maintain that consistent format throughout your project. Lastly, set a date for that first meeting with the students, um, which will ideally also be in October. Um, and then when you go in for that second meeting, which is the first meeting with the students, um, you're going to tell them a little bit about yourself and the Green Schools Quest program. If the project has not yet been determined, um, present the refined list of project ideas and guide students through the process of selecting a project to engage in. It's good to discuss timeline, impact measures, and necessary resources as well. To assist Schools and mentors, we do provide a variety of resources, um, such as the 101 Ways to Green Your School document, which is pictured here, um, as well as an outline of the evaluation criteria and a list of community resources that can be quite helpful. Um, all of these are available to you online by visiting usgbc-mogateway.org and selecting the Green Schools Quest under the Community tab. In addition to our website, uh, they are available in a Google Drive folder and linked to in the welcome letter that you will uh, receive along with your assigned school um, in that welcoming email. So all of the materials are very accessible. We'll look at a couple of them right now, um, beginning with that 101 Ways to Green Your School. Um, you'll notice the key on the front, which uh, includes a section for investment highlighting whether and, and you know each option would be considered no cost, low cost, or potentially moderate to high cost. Though this initiative is developed around no or low cost, we want for schools to be aware of some of the moderate to high cost items as well. Um, perhaps these are items that a school will want to work towards, um, or perhaps they want to utilize their Green Schools Quest initiative to engage you know, students in researching um, a moderate to high cost item um, and how it would be implemented. Perhaps students would put together a presentation and present it to the board or engage the community in some way and teach them about the, the different options that are available to them um, that they might move towards. So there are really a lot of no and low cost actions that can be taken to contribute to the school eventually being able to move forward on a moderate to high cost item. For the documentation for such a project, you would simply be capturing all of those new cost um, activities that took place. This resource is divided into categories that are aligned with the LEED rating system, um, so sustainable sites, water efficiency, etc. Um, the community resources document I mentioned um, is also divided into these categories as well for easy reference. 
Um, the list that's pictured here includes items that fall under the sustainable sites category. If you look over to the right, you'll see that we've identified that even though item number one is listed under sustainable sites, um, it's also related to energy and health. Because many of these activities are beneficial in multiple ways, we wanted to showcase the interconnectedness of these initiatives as well. Project tips. Consider current school resources as well as ongoing maintenance. Um, we want to ensure that these projects live on well past the conclusion of the Green School's quest. So be sure to think about ongoing maintenance. Um, encourage the green team to share their efforts with the whole school as well as their community. Um, the third item listed in bold states, this must be a new project or major extension of existing efforts. So keep in mind, this initiative is not about documenting things that have already been done in the school. It's about moving a new project forward or majorly expanding on, a diff on an existing effort. Absolutely fine to continue building upon efforts and refining efforts as long as new action is being taken to, you know, to refine those efforts in the school. Um, we just don't want to document things that have already been completed and are, are kind of established and, and in the past in a way. We encourage you to think about the evaluation criteria as you plan, um, as it reflects items that our Green Schools Committee has identified as things that they see as important for this project. Utilize your community resources. There are so many wonderful resources out there that are available to you. Um, we've compiled a list of some just to get the juices flowing and give you uh, an idea of some of the individuals and organizations you might reach out to. Taking pictures and videos throughout the year, as I mentioned before, and remembering to have those photo releases signed. Um, you'll also want to document the dollar and resource savings. We really want schools to be thinking about how many units of you know, this resource we are actually saving. You know, what is the carbon reduction? How many tons of waste are they diverting? These types of measurements um, of resources, as well as you know, dollar documentation regarding savings. New for 2018-19, we're moving to an online final submission form. Information requested on this form was previously gathered on what was called the cover sheet. The cover sheet has now been replaced by this online form. It is available on our website anytime. You can go on there and see you know, what all the fields are, what's being requested on this form. When it becomes uh, time to turn in the final project submission, there are um, five main components that will need to be turned in. They are outlined on the website at any time, <laughs> right now, um, and include um, the online final submission form itself. Uh, this form will ask for basic school and project information, including a title for the project and a brief description, 150 words, you know, description of the project. Um, it also requests impact numbers, such as number of students and staff involved, and a number of students, staff, and community members impacted, as well as resources saved. Additionally, um, there is a one to two page written report. There is no specific format or template that needs to be utilized for the report. Um, I would recommend referencing the evaluation material um, when the teams are putting together this report. Essentially, it just all needs to fit in two pages. A maximum five minute digital presentation and the photo release forms. New this school year, uh, there is also a school, or excuse me, as introduced last school year, <laughs> um, there is a school sustainability tracking survey, which I'm going to discuss a bit more in, in just a moment. Um, and then I want to note that within the final submission form, if this team chooses to engage in an energy-related project this school year, they would also need to fill out the optional 
narrative um, for the focus of the year award consideration, you know, on the outline form. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in a minute as well. So regarding those photo releases, we have two options available. One would be an individual student release form, which each student's parents would sign, um, send the photo release and turn in. The other option would be just one form in which a school official would certify that they already have photo release forms um, on file for each of these students. Uh, this is a really streamlined approach. You know, a lot of schools already have photo release forms on file. Um, so I think it's a good option to consider, um, but also something that you'll want to think about well before the final submission is due. So you're not running around at the last minute trying to collect all these forms. The online submission form includes fields to upload that written report, digital presentation, and photo releases. So those will all just be uploaded right into that form. It is a Google form, and if anyone has um, difficulty accessing Google platform, Google Suite, uh, please just reach out to me and we will find a way for you to get the required information um, to us. Uh, the online submission format, as I mentioned, is currently posted on our website and available at any time. So the school sustainability tracking survey is one of the items um, that I mentioned will need to be turned in. This survey was introduced last year as a tool to build awareness of holistic measures that schools can take um, towards charting a path towards whole school sustainability, um, while also helping USGBC Missouri Gateway to learn more about each school so that we may better support you know, school sustainability initiatives within our community. The Green Schools Quest itself is project-based, so that is, is very different than taking a, a very um, holistic, whole school approach. And so these are meant to complement each other in many ways. Um, the material in the survey relates directly to the Green Ribbon Schools Award program that we discussed earlier. Under the school sustainability tracking survey portion of the scoring rubric, um, you'll see that schools receive an automatic five points for completing and submitting the survey, or zero points for not um, completing and submitting the survey. So five points can really have a substantial impact on a school's score. So please you know, be sure that your teams fill out the survey when you dig into the survey, which is a, a two-page document, um, you'll see that there are several options for each item listed, including a scale from no evidence to comprehensive and an option to indicate I don't know. Um, so we don't want for any school to be held back by um, on their five points on this, so, so you do have the option to simply say, I don't know, um, though of course we would encourage schools to investigate. And this is just you know, a general tool that can be used um, to again, raise awareness, but it's also a, a great tool for identifying project ideas um, if the school doesn't have anything in mind already, or maybe they can just start you know, thinking about future years. They might wanna, wanna zero in on one of these areas. Um, I do want to mention that performance, as it's reflected in the school's survey response, um, does not affect the score of their submission at all. It's simply a five points for turning it in and zero points for not. Um, performance is not considered in, in that scoring. Um, we request that schools complete this survey online. Um, there's a link on our website. There's also a link in that final submission form, you know, directing everyone over there. Um, though we do also have a PDF available, um, which really makes it, um, it's, a, it's a really good tool for when you're actually discussing, you know, these items and running through, um, you know, all these different areas with this team. So much easier to reference this just two-page document um, than, than navigate through the online form during your discovery and, and discussion phases there. 
We're always so excited to celebrate all of the winners of the Green Schools Quest. Um, we'll have first, second, and third place winners in the elementary, middle, and high school categories. Uh, each of those winners will receive a cash award and trophy. These trophies are made locally by Third Degree Glass Studio uh, with recycled glass. Beyond recognizing first, second, and third place winners, five additional awards with one recipient each will be presented across the categories. These additional awards aim to recognize and reward a diverse set of competing schools, including those that continue to join the Green Schools Quest and improve year after year, as well as the rookies who are new to the program. Uh, these awards are the Rookie of the Year. Um, this award seeks to encourage and reward new voices in the Green Schools Quest. Only first-time participants are, avail are eligible for this. Um, the Sustainability Champion is aimed at recognizing the ongoing dedication and continued commitment to growth of schools that have participated in the Green Schools Quest for three years or more. Uh, focus of the year, each year, USGBC, Missouri Gateway, um, the Green Schools Committee will designate a particular theme. Schools have the option of following this theme um, to qualify for this additional award. Uh, schools are not penalized if they choose not to follow this annual theme. It simply allows the opportunity for consideration for this additional award. Um, and themes are established to reflect current issues both locally and globally um, and require an additional narrative to be included in the final submission packet, um, which I had mentioned earlier. That's just a field on the online form. Um, the 2018-19 focus of the year is energy and a new resource document with a wide range of energy-related project ideas has been developed and is posted on our website. The judge's choice Many years there are participating schools that offer a contribution or effort that may be unexpected or is not reflected in the scoring rubric. The Judges Choice Award allows judges the opportunities to um, recognize deserving schools that might not be an exact fit elsewhere. And then we also have the Innovation Award. Recipients of the five new awards each receive $100 and schools are eligible to receive up to two awards per cycle. So for instance, they could place in first, second, or third, and then also win you know, one of these additional awards. This is a picture of the scoring rubric. Um, you all have access to this. It's posted on our website. Um, again, I would recommend looking through and seeing what some of the main um, areas are that you'll want to keep in mind during your project. Similar to past years, uh, we will be engaging out-of-state judges to determine the first, second, and third place winners in the elementary, middle, and high school categories. Um, these judges are professionals active in green schools related work within their local communities or at the national level. For the five additional awards, we will be engaging local professionals to serve as judges. On the left of the screen, you'll see an image of a participant decal. This is a static cling, roughly 10 inches in diameter, um, that each school will receive. Uh, we pass these along to our mentors to bring to their schools, and we encourage schools to place their decal um, in a window at the front of their school. Uh, there's a smaller decal that has the year of participation that can be displayed next to the large decal. So as schools participate over and over again, they'll add stickers representing all of the years that they've participated. I mentioned earlier that all of these resources are available to you electronically. Um, now is a good time for you to dig into those. Please do open that Google Drive folder or visit our website to gain access to the digital files. Um, particularly, I encourage you to take 15 to 20 minutes right now um, to open up some of the final submissions from past winning teams. Uh, they truly are outstanding, um, inspirational, absolutely amazing, uh, filled with creativity um, and excitement. 
Uh, this is going to help you give a better sense of what the end goal is for documentation and get the wheels spinning on how you and your team might approach doing the final documentation for your school. Um, we also send a, a welcome letter to each participating school, um, which includes these resources and encourages them to look uh, at these final submissions from past winning years as well. Uh, many of the submissions that we've received that are in video format are posted on our YouTube channel. Um, and we also have uh, documents that provide brief descriptions of past um, projects from each school year as well. So this concludes the online training. Thank you so much again for participating. Uh, please keep in touch with any questions and we hope that you have a lot of fun in this coming school year. Thank you. Greetings. On behalf of the U.S. Green Building Council, Missouri.